Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a tool that provides us some options when bringing in geospatial information in the Civil 3D. Uh, specifically in this case, what it's going to allow me to do is connect to a shapefile and then bring that shapefile geometry directly into Civil 3D as AutoCAD entities. In this case, I'm going to convert them into blocks that will represent signage. But at the same time, the shapefiles themselves have attribute information about those signs. I'd like to take that attribute information and automatically populate at the same time when it's brought in the attributes that make up my block so that I can do it all in one step, convert my geospatial information into blocks with attributes within Civil 3D. So let me show you how I would go about doing that. First thing, I'm in a blank drawing now. We'll take a look at the command map import. This is something you could pull from the menu, but I'll type it in for right now just so that um, it's just a little bit easier. We can get to it quicker. Uh, I'd recommend looking at uh, one of the workspaces or maybe creating a button that you could access it because this is something we can tend to do a lot. Uh, using map import, what it'll allow us to do is this is how we will connect the geospatial information and then convert that into geometry in, in our uh, drawing file. So I'm going to select this shape file. We'll say OK. And in the um, import properties dialog, I can go through and start setting the different parameters that I'd like to use when this information is imported. So the layer, uh, the input layer, the drawing layer, um, I'm not going to worry about changing any coordinates or anything like that. Data is very important because this is what will give us access to the attributes. So by default, it'll be do not import attribute data. I would like to create object data. And then this is where I can select fields or see the attributes that are associated with this particular shapefile. All right, so as I look at it, feature ID is one thing that will always be added automatically. That will ensure that I've got a unique ID for everything. But as I work my way down, I can see that I've got type height, the date that it was collected, notes, message, uh, because these are signs, it might be the uh, message that's on the sign, uh, no parking or something like that. I could have uh, the condition, whether it's good, fair, poor, all right. Uh, once again, rather than just bringing these in and getting blocks, I'd like to have access to all this data as well. Um, I could bring it in as object data, which is nice, but then won't necessarily be visible on the screen. Instead, we'll convert it into a block and then uh, create it such this information will be legible as, as kind of like a label uh, attributes in that block. So we'll go ahead, um, I'll click on OK. We see what those values are. I'm going to cancel out of this. And then I'm going to step over before I bring that in and show you that I've built a block here. Uh, the block contains geometry that represents the signage. The insertion point will be at the center of the sign. Uh, this information here is just text, but these are my attribute definitions. And you'll notice that these attribute definitions match exactly what we had in the shapefile. That's the key. The attribute tags themselves have got to match exactly what was used in the shapefile. If it does, then our mapping you know, will we'll go over one to one and it will work out just fine. Okay, so I've already, I've already built this. We'll go ahead, come back to my empty drawing and we'll insert one of those so that it's inside my file. So we'll say insert, browse, and we're going to go into the signage here. We'll say open. I'm going to insert that on the screen. And when I click to insert that, we see now it says edit attributes, and then those are all the attributes that I would fill in. All right, so I've got a block in here now. We'll say OK. Um, I actually, once I've inserted it, I don't need this one anymore because the definition exists in my drawing now. So I can delete it, and it will stay in my file. It'll be one of those things that if we were going to purge it, we would be able to purge it at this point. But uh, the definition's there, so now we can, we're ready to go. We can go ahead and use the, the command we looked at before. We'll say map import signage. And then we'll come down, we'll work our way across data. What I would like to do is I would like to uh, create object data. The object data that I'd like to use is from the signage. We've got all these fields selected, that's fine. We'll say OK and OK. AutoCAD points, I'm going to select this. This is one area that most folks generally don't go to. Um, by default, it would create just an AutoCAD point. Uh, instead, I, I don't want to use a point. I could select a block from the list, or I could select the ellipsis here and give it some additional information we'd like to use. So I'd like to create as blocks. 
I'm going to click on the down arrow and we'll scroll down. I believe sign, yep, will be the last one I put in. We'll go ahead and select that. What's cool here is as you look at this, we've also got an option that says get block name from data. That means we could take from the attributes that were included in the shape file, I could use one of the attributes to determine the block name that's leveraged when it's brought in. All right, uh, extremely powerful tool. In our case, we've just got one block we want to use for the signage. And then this is the box we want to make sure and check is get attribute values from fields. What that will do is it will take the attributes within the shapefile. It will match those to the attributes that are created in this block. And then when it's brought in, it'll automatically populate those and be ready to go. So we'll click on OK. And we'll click on OK. That information is processed. And if we zoom in now and look, we see that the shape information for those uh, values that were filled in um, in this case, it doesn't look as though the message field was uh, leveraged at the time of collection, but we can see that things like condition, the date that it was collected, uh, height, speed limit, uh, as far as type and notes, all of, that is, uh, all of that has been populated for us. All right, so in a single step, we were able to take our geospatial information, convert that into typical AutoCAD blocks, and then still leverage the attributes associated with that geospatial information, have that mapped directly to our blocks as well. All right, so once again, just another strategy for bringing in or connecting to geospatial data, allow us to connect it directly to um, DWG objects, another option over maybe using FDO, so it uh, can give us some flexibility depending on you know what our project requirements are. So hope this helps, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.